All right, boys. We got a new NHL season right at our doorstep. And with that comes the classic usual leaf talk that we get to do every year. And I feel like it's like Major League at the beginning where everybody's excited and they're all expecting like, you know, they're going through and everybody's got their own dissection. So let's go. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about the Leafs. Thoughts, opinions. How the I'm not excited go. at all. Good. Yeah, good. Good I'm start. I'm not excited at all. I've, n- I've never been less excited about a season, to be honest, because we have 82 games. And basically, let's call it what it is, 82 dress rehearsals. 82 dress rehearsals, which don't mean anything unless they, of course, don't make the playoffs, which I do think they will make the playoffs because they do fine in the regular season. Regular season, they're great. Uh, So, yeah, I think they'll make the playoffs. And once the first round comes and adversity hits in that first round, that's when the problems start, as we have seen for the last five years. So, I don't know. I'm not confident. Let's put it that way. Of them making it further than that. And it's still early. Well, I think in past years, um, maybe we can all uh, uh, agree that I say in the last two, three years, I don't think the Atlantic has been this competitive, um, you know, since, uh, you know, you got the emergence of Florida, which I think, you know, I think we all feel pretty high, uh, probably, probably the most improved team uh, here. Um, Ottawa has always given the Leafs fits Montreal. Let's not go down that road, but still, you know, it's Leafs Montreal, always good games. Boston's always lingering. It's just, it, it's a good division. Um, you know, your pretty, your, sta- your, your slam dunks are pretty much going to be Detroit Buffalo. Like you got to win those games, pretty much all of them, all four of them. Um, but when you're talking about these divisional games now with Boston, with Florida, with Tampa, uh, Montreal, I'm trying to look at the positive here that these games here, might be the games that give them more or testament in the adversity category than they may have in the past. They may have been just more layups in the past and put them on cruise control. This will be a fight to the end between wild card, between winning division. Who, like, obviously they're going to be within that one to four range. Obviously, I think we all have, I feel confident that they're, you know, saying that they can make the playoffs. It's not a slam dunk by any means, but I think the games, those games in December, January, like they may mean a lot more than they have in the past. I, I think that's where it may help. Um, but again, how can you be confident? It's going to the year, you know, four, year five of this first round and out stuff. You can't be confident anymore. You just can't. I know there's a lot of th- six. Thanks, Joe. I know there's diehards out there. Listen, we love the Leafs. Joe and I are big Leaf fans, but it's hard to sit here and be, oh, yeah, this is the year. No, no it's not. <laughs> you don't just go from being knocked out of the playoffs consistently in the first round to being Stanley Cup champions. It's just it, it hardly ever happens. So, you know, everybody has their measuring sticks of, of what's a successful year. But one round's not not enough for me. Two rounds is probably not enough for me. They have to take a considerable step forward. And if I learned anything from that um, um, that series on Amazon without really dissecting it, you know, I think Paul McLean said it best. They have demons that they have to get over. They have demons in their bed, demons in their closet. They're they're facing demons from the past. And though that core four, add Riley to it, whomever, those are the ones that have to get over it. This is not management anymore. There, there's something in that dress room that says enough of the bullshit. You know, and lastly, I'll say on the regular season, if they learn anything from the regular season, use that time to now make it playoff ready. All these tic-tac-toe shit. No, play playoff hockey starting in January. You make that turn into the in, into the new year. You you make that that grinding style of play. Not this fancy shit, uh, the, you know, wheel and deal hockey that they play. Learn how to play playoffs. If they think they can get ready for that, it doesn't turn on game one. Start it in January. So... That's kind of, before I get going here, Bobby, what do you got? <laughs> oh, that wasn't you. Oh, tell us how you really feel then. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know how much more adversary this team has to go through. I, I, I just don't know what the regular season is going to do for them. I agree they're going to make the playoffs. I think they should make it relatively easy, easily. But I, I hope Leaf fans can acknowledge that now they know what San Jose fans felt for years or if San Jose has any fans. This is the feeling of, you know, good regular season playoff disaster. Uh, I was disappointed, got to be honest with you, disappointed with the fans cheering at the home opener, uh, at the preseason home opener. I understand everybody was excited to be back, but I think that was a good moment to let the team know 
last year was unacceptable. Uh, I think that it was just a little give him a little bit because this team again, it's just the coddled, it's the coddled aspects of this. We view this team as coddled. Now, the only thing, go ahead, Frank, before I keep going. Okay, before you keep going, I'm going to throw a little uh, uh, yes or no, or, or you know, the the, the uh, segment that we have um, at some point this season. Does Marner get the Larry Murphy tr- uh, treatment? And you know no, what I'm talking about? No, I don't think so. He'll probably cry or something, or something will happen. And I don't think so. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I think it might be coming to that point. But go, go ahead, Rob. I think he's going to have a great regular season, so there's going to be no reason to boo him. So yep. um, I'm going to save that to the end because there's something I want to talk about that. But go ahead. So the Leafs have nothing to look forward to in terms of Leaf fans, no. the Leafs, nothing to look forward to. But there might be a silver lining here. And I'm not this like, oh, they learned a lesson last year. I don't think they learned anything. This team looks like they're completely oblivious to everything. But championships seem to be born out of disappointment. I don't know whether it just alters expectations or deviates pressure. Think about the the Red Sox. The Red Sox in 03 have this really good team. They go against the Yankees. They're up in game seven. They're up in the game. And then Grady Little, we all know the Grady Little, you know, and they end up losing an absolute heartbreaker that any Boston fans are probably like, we're never getting over the hump. And the year later, they're down 3-0, and all of a sudden, they win the championship. I was thinking about the 2016, I believe it was 2016, I'm not even sure about the year. For years, the Virginia Cavaliers and the NCAA tournament were kind of underachievers. They're the first number one seed to ever lose to a 16. We said for years, will it happen? It was like, nah, it's never going to happen. The Cavaliers lose to, I uh, can't remember the team that beat them in the 16th seed. The next year, they come back, and they just win the tournament. The only thing that the Leafs have is that that disappointment, that failure was so bad that maybe, just maybe, they come out like one of these two teams that just, it's just unexplainable at sports. I know, Joe, you're giving me that look, but that's the only thing I would have to say for Leaf fans is that, like, maybe, just maybe they can be one of those teams that just suffers such disappointment that the next year they somehow it like it's almost like sports is unexplainable from sometimes it was like those two scenarios and you do not seem sold on that at all i'm not sold either i'm just saying this is something that i'm trying to help you guys thanks i appreciate it yeah. you're like my therapist <laughs> i just for them i don't buy it like they they have it in five seasons they've had chances to close out series and their biggest players have not shown up for those games it's so demoralizing as a fan to and on top of all of that (laughs) on top of it all let's not even talk about the fact that this team is absolutely cursed and there's no way or or doubt about it i mean i could list uh, uh, several reasons as to prove to prove this you've got Tavares getting hurt 10 minutes into a series. You got a global pandemic striking at the absolute worst time, which doesn't allow the cap to rise as soon as the Leafs just signed their core four. Worst possible timing. Then we've got the the high stick that we all talk about for years and years and years. It's just, I feel like I'm a, I'm a, I'm a dead horse and I've just been beat with a stick over and over again with this team that... You know what? I'll, I'll cheer for them Saturday nights for sure. I love hockey on Saturday nights, but I'm just, I'm not ready to get my heart broken again. I, you guys are just playing into my theory about the, you know, I had my theory about the Leafs losing to Montreal. This is what like emotional abuse is like. This is what it's like. You don't want to get heartbroken again. You're, you're you, so you emotionally, just, you put your listen, you're so emotionally invested. Right. It, it, you're, you're so emotionally invested in this. It's like you, you try not to be, but there's going to be a point in this season where they're going to go on a seven game winning streak or an eight game winning streak and they pull you back in. And it's going to be hard to say, you know what? No, not this time, but it's going to happen to a lot of us. I'm trying, I'm going to do my best to not fall for that shit because there's going to be a Tuesday night where Buffalo comes to town. <laughs> they're going to lay an egg and they're going to take, you know, two steps back. And that's just what but this team that happens to every team. Like, you know, Buffalo, and it, Buffalo's going to win some games. No, right? no, I understand that. But I'm just saying that it, it's, it's the mental toughness. It, it, it's, it's how, you know, and again, I'm, I'm going to go back to that doc documentary. Listen, I have a newfound respect for Sheldon Keefe. 
anybody who thought Sheldon Keefe was kind of the the leader of the uh, of the uh, uh, the beach club there, like, hey guys, it's okay. Nah, he's a hard ass, man. He calls guys out, and that's on him to say, listen, we expect you guys to play a certain way. If you don't. I'm going to call you out in front of everybody. And that's one of the worst things as a coach you can do. But at the same time, it holds you accountable. And I'm not saying he's the greatest coach in the world, but I, it, it changed the perception of what I thought he was. There's a lot of onus in this group to get over that hump, to play a different style, to have not and have those mental errors. So um, I'm just, you know, the other thing too, I'm excited to see what the team's going to be like when they're going on these road trips out to, you know, Southern Florida you know, uh, you know, the, the, that hard, you know, Washington Islanders, Philadelphia stretch, you know, like those are the type of games where I want to see, you know, not till they start playing those type of teams, then we're really going to see what type of Maple Leaf team we're getting because it is going to be a different feel to it because there are going to be different scenarios, different teams are going to be playing with. And it's already starting. Let's hope they not get into a lot of injury trouble. Let's see the type of depth everybody said that they have this year. Oh, we lost Adam Brooks on waivers. Yeah, you know, it sucks. But if they say there's a lot of depth, you know, in, in this organization now uh, with your 15, 16, 17 fours, let's see what they got. Cause they're going to need it. Let's really see how deep this team is. Frankie, that must've really broke your heart when, when he got claimed. Cause you were a big Adam Brooks truther. You know why Joe, he's one of the few guys where, and the Leafs don't have a really good reputation in this. They, there's a guy that they drafted that they, that they groomed in house. It was a big junior player at, that or 200 points. Uh, one year in, in Victoria in, in in the WHL. And I thought, you know, there's a guy who showed during the uh, stretches the last couple of years that he could play at this level, maybe in a fourth pops third line role. But he was a homegrown guy who who put it out there every time he played. He deserved to be in this lineup. Now they took a guy like Amadio who played over 200 games. And, you know, you don't want to fall in love with these guys, but it's these stories where you want to see a guy like that succeed. Rather than bringing in a guy for 700k who's you know trying to uh, reclaim his his uh, his career and I just it was a feel good story and I called it you'll see on my Twitter I called it any goddamn team but Montreal because they saw him ten times last year so obviously they saw something in Brooks now he's going to be their number one center so um, so let's uh, you know what I, I I hope they do reclaim and be quite honest with you I I, I He's going to be okay. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it stung a bit, but, hey, you move on. Uh, so what I would say to you guys, because we really haven't talked very much about it, but what do you guys think of the offseason? Do, like, do you think this team's better than last year, worse than last year? What moves you liked, you didn't like? Well, go, let's, let's get off, like, the. let's go a little bit deeper. Yeah. I don't know, Joe. It's too tough to say. These guys are 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 – interchangeable parts if you really think about it you know the real upgrade they probably had is you know Joe Thornton's not going to be a regular player anymore and it's and when I'm talking about 42 year old Joe Thornton not 32 year old it, you're going to get more serviceable guys in there uh caught uh, Andre Kosh is a lottery ticket you know the guy was a top six guy before the injuries and they're hoping it's a reclamation project Nick Ritchie Hey, he's a guy that they didn't have last year, last couple of years. A guy who's you know a big body who can play as that policeman on that on that top line. Now uh, he's going to be the uh, the so called policeman of of that line, and he's got a chip on his shoulder too. You know, this is his last chance to really make a crack in the league because in two years after his contract's up, that's his last chance to get really uh, staying in the league. If he tries to put up 15, 20 goals, he's going to get five and a half, six somewhere else. Won't be with Toronto, that's for sure. But you want guys with a little bit of chips on their shoulder, right? So these are serviceable guys. Um, I like that. I, I'm still – I know everybody's falling in love with bunting. Time will tell. Time will tell. But, um, you know, the defense is pretty much the same as is. And I know Rob had uh, had some comments last year on the defense. is really not good enough. With Justin Hall's in your top four, I still don't see it. Uh, I, I still think there's an improvement that's got to be made there. I'm um, happy to see Lilligren. Uh, I'm sure he's going to get his crack um, this year. But I think, guys, I think the spotlight's on the goaltending. And I think uh, this is the first time in a while that they've gone with a 1A, 1B. Um, hopefully it creates some good competition. you got guys with historically good numbers in Mrazic and, and, and Campbell, but they're also playing on very good defensive teams. Mrazic's probably coming from the best in Carolina, so he's going to be a culture shock for him. But... Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm just being honest. <laughs> I'm just being honest. <laughs> you know, look at the defense core he had. Look who he's going to be in front of now, right? So, um, you know what? I, I'm going to sum it up like this, Rob. 
I'm coming in hot tonight because I got a lot of, a lot of energy. Uh, it's going to be no. like this. The Leaf season, you know, usually you look at a team like Tampa. And I'm going to use Tampa because there's a measuring stick. You know what you're going to get from Kucherov. You know what you're going to get from Point, Hedman, Vasilevsky. That's their good guys or their good guys. The Leafs are going to be successful, but they also come with a lot of if this happens, if this happens, and if this happens. There's not a lot of ifs with other top teams, but you got a lot of ifs with the Leafs. If Kasha scores 20, if he stays healthy, if Richie, you know, scores 20, if, 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 if. That's all the – the only way there's, they're going to succeed if a lot of those ifs happens. There's not a lot of for sures. Marner's your for sure. Matthews is your for sure. Maybe Nylander, but then it kind of drops off for me. So, Joe yeah, How is Tavares and Nylander not for sure for you? Mine's more um, – I don't know what you're going to get from Tavares with the age. I'm, I'm more the age. You know, being on the on the 31, 32. You, no, Joe, you're going to get consistency, but you're not going to get the 47 goals. Is, is kind of what I'm saying. You know, temporary expectations. That's all. I'm not nothing against the guy. I'm just, you know, just calling I guess I'm a little bit more bullish on on the roster as you are, frankly. I mean, like the D is, yeah, like you said, it's the exact same D. But they were by every underlying metric, they were a top 10 defensive team last year, and that's with. Freddie Anderson sporting a 888 save percentage or whatever the heck it was. And he was play, he played 24 games. So I, I don't think the defense is that bad. I don't think it's going to be an issue at all, to be honest. So long as that Jake Muzzin gets hurt, uh, doesn't get hurt, sorry. I mean, if you look at the last two years, each time they've been eliminated, J- Jake Muzzin has not played in those elimination games. It's hurt them. Yep, true. You know, we know that. Up front, they're, they're better than last year. I mean, look... They started Thornton and, and Jimmy Vesey were in their top six to start the year last year. Travis Boyd was there. And this year, I, I, I like the guys that they brought in on cheap deals. I was a little skeptical of Richie because, you know, I think he's going to take a lot of penalties, but that'll work in the NHL because what they'll, what'll happen is he'll take the penalties and then the refs got to even it out because that's what they do for every game, right? So the Leafs may end up actually getting more power plays because of his extra penalties that he's going to take. <laughs> And then the goaltending, I think, is better than last year because Freddie's not here. I, 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 I cannot believe there are still Freddie truthers out there. Like, the dude has been terrible the last two seasons. I'm so happy that we moved on and that ship has sailed. Let's see what Mirazik can do. But I, I think Jack Campbell is more than good enough. I thought he was really good in the series against Montreal last year. Unfortunate that he let in that terrible goal in Game 7. But the roster, I think, is fine. I think they're going to make the playoffs. I just don't trust them one bit when it when the money's on the line and adversity hits. I think they will buckle like they always do. You're starting to sound like Dan, literally and figuratively. I know my voice <laughs> is gone because I've been yelling too much at work. <laughs> Joe, would you agree that the Bogosian leaving hurts them a lot more than probably it? my 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 honest theory is that the Bogosian leaving hurts more than Hyman leaving. I think that's easier to uh, to fix than a guy like Bogosian. But it's fair, and I loved Bogosian. I thought he was awesome. He be, he's, listen. He's I did not perfect. like the signing when they came, but he he turned me into a believer. Yeah, for right sure. Now. He's perfect for a third line, third defensive pair role. That's what he is at this point of his career. Like losing a third pair of defense defenseman shouldn't be a make it or break it thing for you. You should oh. be able to cover up for that. It's just the elements that he brought is going to be tough to find now in the defense because they're really only – they're, they're going to uh, replace him with Lilligren. That's pretty much what your what your replacement is. They didn't bring in another guy. Yep. You know, you know so – and Lilligren's a question mark. He's a, he's a first-round pick from, what, 2017, I want to say. Been an organization yep. for a while – there's got to be a reason why he he hasn't been up here, right? So now that he's here, is he gonna is he really gonna be hitting guys in the corner and batting that physical element? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I I still think they need to do something there. But I think the one guy to watch this year for the Leafs is uh, my buddy Rasmus Sandin. See how he progresses as a because he's gonna be the number one next year. He has to take the step, right? Yep. yep. You're right, Rob. I think that's gonna be the telling tale whether they can move on from Morgan Riley mm-hmm. or not. So they they have to because they're not gonna be able to resign him. So no, and I would not at uh, not at the eight million and, and change that they're ask uh, that that the market is 
is is uh, trending right now. Not 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 a not a, sorry. But not this is me. I would have tr- I would have traded him this offseason, especially when you saw what other top defensemen yeah. were going for. But they're in a position where they can't do that because they can't be worse this year. They need to win this year. And, and Dubis is notorious for using his own guys as uh, rentals. And mm-hmm. I think the one and the one negative thing about Dubis, whether you like him or you hate him, the one thing he has not done well has been roster management, uh, capitalizing on on assets when you had to. How many guys they've let walk? Um, that's the one really disappointing thing I have to say that I'm not I'm not a big fan of. Okay, um, couple questions here. First of all. Do you think the Leafs will be better off finishing in the five spot in their division to cross over into potentially the other side? No. Any, no. No, okay. I do not think so. And who, they got to have a good regular season to feel good about themselves. I still think that's important. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, I don't want them to just sneak into the playoffs. But, yeah, I'd rather stay in the division. And I don't care who you play. you got to beat whoever you play. Like, stop looking for excuses yeah. all this. Yeah, they lost this team, but that team was really good. No, it doesn't matter. You're supposed to be really good. So beat them. I I, I, I think they finish as high as second, as low as third. So what, who do you guys think are the Atlantic Division standings? I think they, they win a great ma- first-round matchup with the Stanley Cup champs, the Tampa Bay Lightning. Yeah. It's, it's going to be perfect. So yeah. who, do you, who do you got as your as your top four in the Atlantic? I'm with Frankie. I think I think Florida takes a big yeah. step and wins the Atlantic this year. I really like their roster. Remember, Ekblad's going to be bad th- back this year. They got great goaltending with Spencer Knight. I think he's going to be really, really solid. I think they're going to finish first. I think Tampa Leafs will finish second, third. And then you got Boston, Montreal, a couple of teams from the other side, from the Metro, that'll be fighting for those uh, wild card spots. Yep, yeah, those I- my four. Yeah, I think I think I, I got Tampa still winning the division. I think Tampa's still the best team, and then Toronto, Florida, Boston. Could be. Which I would just, mean that Montreal would probably would not make the playoffs, which would be uh, shocking. Totally, yeah, very shocking. I actually, shocking. I actually have Ottawa finishing higher than Montreal. Not because I don't like even them, without just, Brady Kachuk. Oh, he'll sign. He'll sign. Hmm. Good old right. Eugene doesn't want to open up that uh, checkbook. It doesn't matter. I, I Listen, look at Ottawa's roster. They, they work hard. Lines one, one through four, man. I think um, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna get close. I just think Montreal's just, those just – I'm not even going to go there. It's another conversation. But they just – there's something going on there. They just look awful between the injuries and stuff. And, you know, I don't see it. Well, we'll, we'll find out. Soon enough, Frankie. Thanks for coming in hot, Joe. Thanks for coming in raspy. And uh, <laughs> I'll try yeah. to fix my voice for next week for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. low energy Jeb Bush over here this time. <laughs> I didn't think I had bad energy today. I thought my energy was up. Just my voice is messed up. <laughs> I think you were. I think I saw some depression just when when you knew we were talking leaves. So you could see the just me face, wilt but... like a like a sunflower. That's just yeah. all the <laughs> a delicate flower. Anyway. Smash the like and subscribe and, you know, do all that good jazz.